learn to understand the unique symbiotic relationship I, as a human being, had with the natural world, purely because our survival depended on it. Our lifestyle and our choices weren't influenced by politics. It wasn't influenced by economics. It was influenced by nature. The tides, the seasons, the weather. And so we started to appreciate this really fundamental concept is that we can't have one without the other. We all need each other to depend. Oh, there's a really great opportunity here for science and indigenous knowledge to create a real force to be reckoned with when it comes to stabilizing our planet, when it comes to stabilizing our existence as homo sapiens. And I don't think you can have one without the other. And they will both complement one another if we be serious about integrating that knowledge as part of mainstream awareness and practice. The lies with all of us. And capitalism, oh my goodness. Which is driven by politics and economics. It's killing us. And what we really need to do is make a really strong decision and shift in our minds about what are we going to do with the legacy we leave behind. And that's a really important concept because legacy is embedded in our culture. It is the epitome of who we are is what we leave behind. And so if you really would like some sort of reference or a guideline into what a positive legacy may seem like in the next hundred years, I genuinely believe the answer lies with indigenous knowledge and Western science coming together and educating everybody about what are the most important values to us as human beings. These images are of a liquid steel spill at DeFasco on Hamilton's Harbor. This occurred as recently as Saturday, November 14, 2020. DeFasco is one of the many industries responsible for pollution that contaminates the air and water quality daily. Despite the negative impacts on our environment and people's health, the government keeps industries like this open for economic gain. For many chemical pollutants, sediment is the largest depository. What we call legacy compounds like DDT, PCBs, they were banned several decades ago, but they are still around. After they get into water, they tend to attach to the particles, every kind of particles, and then these particles settle to the bottom of the lake. Sediments gradually become a reservoir, become what we call the secondary source, releasing these kind of legacy compounds back into water and back into air. Our human impact on the Great Lakes is certainly uh, visible in this uh, history that we find. Indigenous worldview and traditional ecological knowledge applied in the government's decision making would be the answer to saving our environment's rapid decline. We must act now and join indigenous peoples in the fight to protect our environment.